Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We have another very, very important conversation today. I'm sure we're going to have a good time too, but it's a topic that a lot of people don't want to talk about. A lot of people maybe don't even know they need to talk about. We're going to talk about mental health and entrepreneurship and just in life, how to recognize it, how to know if you're stressed, you're anxious, you're overwhelmed, all of those terrible things that we're going to get you past in this episode. We're going to recognize fix. And I have a special guest who is going to share her very unique approach that I've never heard to tackling mental health challenges. But before we get there, let's talk about Harmonious and why we're here and what are we talking about? This is the episode where we disrupt the way you think about your business. It is the 10 fundamental business disciplines that every business across the board must utilize and master in order to grow and scale their business. But of course, there's the other side of business. It's the leader, the you in the business. How do you show up your mind and your body, that three-legged stool of business optimize and in the right state is how you can ultimately achieve your dreams in business and get to that next level. I have a feeling we're going to talk a lot about mind today, mindset and mental health, um, but I'm sure it will spill over into business. We'll see what happens. Let me introduce you to my guest, Shanti. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Brandon. Great to be here. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited to to dive in here and hear more about your unique solution to mental health challenges. But um, first, introduce yourself to the crowd. What what is it that you do in the world? Hello, everyone. I am Shanti Refuge. I'm a certified mental health coach, mental health advocate, keynote speaker, author, and advocate. And I show people how to release, heal, and live their best life with guided journaling. Mm, now, that is the interesting part. So what I heard you say is you're a total badass, but you also help people with <laughs> guided journaling mm -hmm. and uh, to help them optimize their, their mental health. So um, it's a unique solution I've never heard of, and I'm excited to dig into a little bit more. But before we get there, I'm curious, how did you come about the solution? What's What happened in your life to, to bring this to you? Uh, back in 2018, I woke up like any other day and I didn't feel well mentally. Like it was, it was just something that was going on. Like, you know how a cloud over your head? Mm -hmm. I literally felt a cloud over my head. So, oh, it's just a funk. I'll get through it. But days passed and my emotions started changing and I became angry crying, mad, cursing, aggressive, and that's not me. Not 24-7 anyway. I was everything <laughs> but happy. And, you know, it went on for a month before I decided to go to my primary care doctor. And I'm saying, hey, I'm, I'm acting crazy. I don't know what's wrong with me. And she's like, oh, here, take antidepressants. And I'm like, I don't want that. I want to know why I'm going crazy. You know, I thought it was menopause, but I'm so young to be going through that. So that wasn't it. So, but that was the only solution that she had for me. And I didn't want that. She eventually sent me to a psychiatrist who I told her my story, what was going on. And she gave me antidepressants. And I'm like, OK, I don't want this. I don't want to be this lady who has a, gl a glass of wine in one hand and pills in the other. I don't want the rest of my life to be like that. So I wanted to, you know, get to the root of what was wrong. And I eventually found a therapist who uh, taught me how to use guided journals. I, I never heard of guided journals either. I'm like, what the hell is this? I don't, you know, when I hear the word journal, I'm thinking diary. And, you know, that word has a negative connotation because, you know, when we were teenagers, we kept diaries and we got in trouble because our parents would go and read them. I'm like, I want to do that. And um, but she explained to me there's a difference. And what she uh, taught me was guided journaling is specific prompts for a specific issue. And you answer those questions. And believe it or not, it helps you to express things that you probably would have never even thought about expressing. Like you forgot about this. But as you're writing, you know, when that pen hits the paper, it comes out and say, oh, my goodness, is that me? And then you're crying and ugly and all that stuff. But in the uh, end, you are healing because you're, you've actually got gotten to the root of what was wrong. And now you can work through it and heal through it. So that's what I do now. I turn my pain into a purpose because I don't want anyone to ever go through what I went through. It was not fun at all. And I don't wish mm. that on anybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, it, it's such a common story, unfortunately, that we just, mm -hmm. you know, life sneaks up on us, if you will. And, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're, you're in a doctor's office being prescribed antidepressants. 
Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. The culture that we live in, I want to back up for a second and before mm -hmm. we dive into, um, into how you actually go about doing this process, mm -hmm. the guided journaling, because you, you, you kind of glazed over something that's so important that I want to highlight on. And it okay. happens in doctor's offices and in businesses. And we see it all the time. So we're fractional COOs, we're consultants, business consultants. Most of the time when people call in a consultant, it's because they have a problem. And a lot of consultants will come in and just prescribe solutions. We don't ever get to your words. You actually said it, the root really? cause. You mm -hmm. don't perform a root cause analysis. It happens in healthcare. And here we are. See that we're tying mindset to business already only five minutes into the episode. Um, but that's why it's so important to dig deeper and ask those questions. And these strategies, uh, what Shanti's about to share with you, I promise you there's an overlap into relating that to your business. So yes, we are talking about entrepreneurs and, and mental health, but just see how, like, do this for yourself while, while we're going mm -hmm. through these questions. How can you apply this in your business? How can you ask better questions to get deeper to the root cause of problems? And I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to find some gold in this episode from both mindset and business. So i um, really excited that you brought that up. So thank you. Um, but tell me, so can we dive in a little bit to this process and, and how you start the process to uncover what's really going on? Well, we always start with gratitude. That's the first thing. No matter what's going on, you start with gratitude. And, you know, you, you know, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. And many people don't understand that, you know, even though we're business owners, we're human too. So, you know, sometimes our personal issues come on over to the business side of things. And if you're not any good to yourself, then how are you going to be good for your business? So I always tell business owners, take care of yourself, take care of your mental health, your physical health. And if you are in a position where you can't delegate someone to do it for you until you can do it. But I, I always start with gratitude and then we get to, you know, your why, you know, why did you choose this as your business? Because sometimes people choose businesses for the money. And if their heart isn't in it, the business won't last. You know, you have to find your purpose and there's no expiration date or time limit on when you find your purpose. I didn't find my purpose till I was, you know, 44. <laughs> you know, and it's nothing wrong with that. Some people find their purpose when they're 18, 19, and 20. You know, we're all different. And we have to start with stopping comparing ourselves, at, you know, to other people and other businesses. Um, if something isn't going right in a business, if you're having issues with employees, you know, or products or customer service, you have to look at yourself first. You are a reflection of your business. You have to look at yourself, even though you want to say, oh, Maggie isn't doing this right. And da, da, da. It starts with you. You know, you have to take accountability for what's going on with yourself and with your business. And once you and that's one of the hardest things people do, they do not like to take accountability. <laughs> 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 and um, but, you know, if you with me, you're going to take accountability, you know. And, you know, you need to have yourself surrounded with people who are like minded. You know, don't take advice from someone who's never ran a business, who's never been in your shoes. You know, our family and friends, those are not our supporters. And that's where a lot of us get, you know, stressed and depressed about our business because they're de we're dependent on the people who know us to come and, you know, buy this or that or, you know, patronize our businesses. But, you know, that's not it. You start with yourself. You have to do some internal work. And from that internal work, then you can go into your business. And um, if your business is your baby, you're going to run it as such. You know, you're going to make sure all that, you know, you're going to be intentional about the name of your business, you know, what you're selling or what product or service, who are you hiring? You're going to be intentional about all of that. You can't just, you know, oh, she looks like she needs a job. She's very nice. No, you have to do your research. You have to, again, start with yourself. <laughs> That's where it lies. Start with yourself. You know, um, I've seen so many times where, uh, you know, a business has failed because of the personal, of the personal life, you know, She's not getting along with her husband. They're getting a divorce. The business is failing. And you have to learn how to separate those two because they're not the same. You know, your mm -hmm. business is your business. Personal is personal. Keep them separate. 
Yeah. And it's, but it's also important to see like, you know, how, how you're showing up in both places. Are you two different people in, in your relationship and in your business? Because that's not sustainable either. And I, I think when a lot of people start to really fall apart in business, it's because like you said, they have the, they're not clear on their why or their mm -hmm. purpose because they haven't thought about it. And maybe they're chasing money or, or ego fame, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, I had, I actually had a conversation earlier today um, with someone who said they experienced burnout many, many years ago because their, their personal life and how they would show up in the world was drastically different from how they would show up at work. Mm -hmm. And they, they just felt this, this dissonance to kind of reference the word above my head, harmonious. That's what we're mm -hmm. all after is harmony, right? They right. felt dissonance between how they were showing up and it's unsustainable. So, um, yeah, that's, that's all really good, really good advice. And, and I love the way you explain that there. So, all right, we're starting with, we're starting with gratitude. We're understanding our purpose. And then where, where do we go from there from, uh, to, to fill out this journaling process? For you, first, you have to choose a topic that you want to talk about, mm -hmm. that you want to express yourself. Choose that topic. I always suggest that you work on one topic at a time. Yeah. Do you have any that come up with your clients that are uh, maybe more popular than others? The most popular ones are Get Out of Your Way, which is an anti-self-sabotage guided journal. That's my number one. And then my manifestation uh, guided journal. I think it, I want it, I manifest it. That's number two. And then self-esteem is number three. Very cool. All right. So then let's, let's tackle the, the biggest one, the most okay. important, right? So get out of your own way. What, yeah. what would that look like in terms of the, the questions we're asking and how we would go about journaling that? In the guided journal, there are um, reasons. There's a list of reasons why you would be self-sabotaging. You know, uh, we, so many times we have the idea, we have the, you know, the layout, and then we do something to sabotage it. Like, you know, don't follow through, not consistent. So again, it's something within you that you have to identify and not self-sabotage anymore. Self-sabotage is a dream killer for mm -hmm. real. So <laughs> you have to stop doing that, you know, and that's lack of confidence, lack of support. That's why I mentioned, you know, once it becomes clear to someone when they are writing, so if that journal prompt says, you know, what was the last thing you self-sabotaged? Nobody wants to admit they self-sabotaged, but, you know, <laughs> it happens. But it's when on the you, paper. You got to answer it, right? Yeah, you have to answer it. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to come to the table, to the journal, and be honest. That way, you know, these simple questions are going to pull things out of you that you probably weren't even aware of. It makes you aware. You know, I, some people don't realize they're self-sabotaging. Some people know it and don't care. But, you know, either way, when you're answering these prompts, it's going to get you to, you know, address things that if I were to just ask you in conversation, you probably wouldn't admit to. Hmm. Yeah. You know, that question just popped up as you were talking because someone else had uh, told me about this recently. Different different topic. This was more in terms of uh, finances and financial beliefs, mm -hmm. but that you actually have to put pen to paper and that's part of his process too is writing the answers to the questions and often people are surprised with what comes out have you noticed that the the actual physical writing of things really helps manifest the words that maybe you never even consciously thought about absolutely yes yes because it's different when we're we have all these thoughts in our head we think about what a million different things at the same time some of us and you know you get to declutter your mind you get to put it on paper you know a thought might be one thing in your head but by the time you start writing it it's something better something different or something you know oh i didn't think about this but really yes you did you just didn't know how to express it that's why um i recommend writing first before you talk because, you know, we could say things and probably doesn't make any sense to anyone else. It makes sense to us because we're talking about it, but write it down, make it plain, be specific. That way you are able to articulate what it is that you want in your business or in your personal life or, you know, wherever. And uh, once you do that, you know, those things, they come, especially when you do the work, they come, you can manifest anything you want, but you got to write it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I have another question, but I also 
realized that you told me that these uh, these journals are available on your website. Oh, so let me put that on the screen. If you're listening um, or if you're watching, it's it's on the screen, but it will be this link will be in the show notes as well, so you can access this information. But tell me about what you have um, on this website. You have a, a checklist, I believe, and then where can we get these journals? The guided journals you can get from ShantiRefugeJournals.com or you can go to ShantiRefuge.com and it'll take you to the link to the guided journals. Um, on uh, ShantiRefuge.com, there is a Get Unstuck checklist. So you uh, download that checklist and you check off all the things that you may be stuck from. And more times than not, people don't know that they're stuck, which is the reason why I did the Get Unstuck checklist they don't realize it. So you go through that checklist, you'll find out. <laughs> I was and just going to say, it, this sounds like something that you should do, whether this resonates with you or not, because we, yeah. we often don't know, right? If you're, right. you're self-sabotaging, if you're stuck better, I'd rather find out <laughs> that you tell me I'm not stuck than right. not know for the right. next five years. Right. And if you are um, wanting to uh, use guided journals, I have 26 different topics. So they range from self-love, self-esteem, uh, relationships, goal planning, self-awareness. You name it, I have it. If I don't, I will make it for you. So <laughs> you could go and all of them come with affirmations pertaining to the topic that you chose. And they come with plenty of writing space and plenty of prompts for you to get writing and to, for you to express yourself. That is so awesome. What a what a fantastic idea. And especially if we go back to the beginning of this conversation, mm -hmm. avoiding medication that is useless and probably hurting you more than than not being on the medication and just suffering with mental health issues in a lot of cases, right. which is crazy to say out loud, but and incredibly sad. But I, I love that you're doing this and you've you've stumbled upon this. Thank you for turning your pain into your purpose also and sharing it with so many other people. Um, so we're going to wrap this episode up, but this, this is a topic that I'm, I'm really excited to bring to light because as an entrepreneur who has had multiple companies, I've experienced burnout. I have self-sabotage to the point of failing companies, big companies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I have run into the ground because I was not aware of the subconscious habits that I was practicing. And, and you know, I'm, I'm thankful to say that those are in the past and I, I have shined a light in those areas, but I didn't know, just like you said, I had no idea. And I just thought it was, you know, it was the world. It was the circumstances. It was this, right. it was that it's not, it's you hate to yeah. deliver the bad news, <laughs> at the end of the episode, but, yeah. but it's fixable and Shanti can help you. So um, where else can I, we have your website on the screen. It's in the show notes. All that stuff will be in the show notes. Um, can we follow you on social media or anywhere and, and follow Absolutely. your journey? Absolutely. Please come and follow me. I am Shanti Refuge Journals on every platform. I'm on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, LinkedIn. I'm the same person. That's a branding lesson for you too. We weren't going to talk <laughs> about branding today, but oh, man, so many people come on here and they say, this is my link on LinkedIn and then TikTok and then this and that. Just have the same username on all yes, platforms, please. <laughs> oh man, that's so awesome. Well, thank you for that. And thank you for coming and, and sharing your story and what you're doing. This is so, so cool. Um, so let me tie this to the harmonious architecture real quick and how this can improve your business because that's what we're really here for, right? So this is obviously talking about mindset and the mind body piece of showing up as a leader in business. And those two aspects of this episode of the show always tie over to the I in harmonious, which stands for inspire. That is our definition of leadership. What is the essence of leadership? It's to inspire your team or to inspire yourself and anyone you're working with to chase the mission and vision of your company to connect with the, the original why and purpose of why you started this business and make an impact on the world. So there is obviously a correlation there between what we're talked about and the eye of Inspire, but the other side of this too, and I've had situations where I wish, Shanti, I knew you five years ago. <laughs> Home, humans optimize in a meaningful environment. This is where we put your people in business. If I had this tool to give to some of my employees who suffered with depression, who suffered with anxiety, self-sabotaging, you as a leader, your ultimate job is to build up the people around you. There's, you have no other job. You are there to support your team. You hire these people, you pay them, you must improve their lives. That is my belief. I am putting that on you. 
And this is a way to do that. There are so many people who are walking through life blind, self-sabotaging, and hurting themselves and others around them, and ultimately your company as a leader. So please reach out to Shanti. I'm sure she can help you. I'm sure she would love to help you yeah, and get you <laughs> these journals and the checklist. Yeah. Thank you again for coming. This has been such a such a great episode and a great Thank conversation. Um, I, I hope to have you back in the future. That would be Absolutely, awesome. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, you listening, watching out there, wherever you are, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a minute of this wacky show that I just love putting on and meeting all these amazing guests and bringing them to you um, and drop it in the comments. What are your takeaways from this episode? What are you going to do? I hope you go to this website. That's what you should do. If you're watching again, it's in the show notes. Thanks for joining. And thank you for supporting this show harmonious at lunch. We will see you on the next one.